We're going to go ahead and get started here in a second. Can everybody hear me? Cool thumbs up. All right, awesome. Uh, well, uh, first of all, it's an honor to uh, be with you guys. Um, uh, MUA <laughs> did a lot for me, so I'm just kind of grateful to be here and to kind of tell you about my experiment or my experience with them. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about myself first. Uh, uh, my name is Mike. Uh, I'm currently in Brooklyn. What you see behind me is my small, low Brooklyn apartment. Um, and my specialty is interventional radiology. And I'll just tell you kind of how I got there. So I uh, was uh, raised in North Carolina. I went to school in North Carolina. And after school, um, moved to Memphis, Tennessee. And I kind of always knew I wanted to be a doctor. But um, we all know, or many of you may know, how hard it is to get into um kind of a U.S. med school. So uh, I met a guy who was an OB-GYN there who had actually gone to MUA as well. And he kind of suggested the, uh, this foreign medical school. And I was, um, I was stoked. I mean, I was really excited to kind of have this opportunity. I applied and I got in and I decided to uh, make the jump. Um, so I started in 2012 and I graduated from MUA in 2016. Um, at that point, like what I really, my, my heart was into, uh, surgery and I was a prelim surgery resident at, um, Mount Sinai here in New York city. Uh, after that first year, um, I kind of want that I was, uh, I had done a lot of vascular surgery and I loved, uh, the endovascular treatment, um, that we were doing. Basically that means like um, angioplasty, stents, peripheral arterial disease, and then a lot of the bread and butter stuff that normal interventional radiologists do. Um, but my particular interest was uh, arterial disease. So during that first year, I was kind of trying to figure out what my plan was going to be, where I was going to go next. And um, uh, an opportunity kind of opened up at Sinai for me to stay for another year and do vascular surgery there. So um, what ended up happening, everybody can hear me, right? I'm getting kind of like a weird phone call. So I just want to make sure that everybody, I've heard of my own live. Good. Thumbs up, everybody. All right, cool. Well, I'm assuming everybody can hear me. All right, perfect. Thank you. Um, so stayed that extra year at Sinai and I did a ton more vascular, uh, vascular surgery. And even though I loved operating, um, the coolest thing for me was the endovascular treatment. Uh, basically, if you haven't uh, heard of that before, what we do is like minimally invasive procedures, right? We use holes the size of less than a centimeter to get into any part of the body that we want to get. And basically using either x-rays or ultrasounds, um, we can uh, treat tumors. We can uh, save legs that have like, you know, pe patients that have horrible, um, poorly controlled diabetes and they get a ton of, um, atherosclerosis. We, our job is basically to do the best that we can before surgery is the final option. Um, and guys, I'll answer some questions at the end. Um, if you don't mind, so I could just kind of tell you about myself. I'll tell you about MUA, why I highly kind of recommend going there and kind of some of my friends as well. So I had gotten in, I'll answer this one because I had gotten into a general surgery program, but during that general surgery year, we got actually placed into um, a lot of vascular surgery. So it was tough, but I, I really enjoyed it. And during that, like I had mentioned, during that second year in that transition, I decided that um, I wanted to apply to uh, radiology and then go into interventional radiology. So from Mount Sinai, I got into SUNY Downstate, and that's where I'm currently at. I'm actually in my last year of residency. Um, it's been a long journey, but I'm super excited. And then next year, I'm going to the Leahy Clinic, uh, which is right outside of Boston. It's a part of the Beth Israel system affiliated with Mass General and Brigham, uh, I believe Mass General, um, part of the Harvard system out there and affiliated with Tufts University as well. So I'm super excited about that. Um, and yeah, it's been, a, it's been an awesome journey so far. Um, MUA was, 
I mean, MUA got me here. How can I explain it? I mean, uh, I'm assuming that if you're watching this, it's because you are considering going to MUA or you're already there and you kind of want to see if, you know, if people made it out. <laughs> um, so here I am. Um, I started at MUA. Uh, obviously, like anybody else, I was nervous. Um, I <laughs> had no idea what I was doing. Uh, going down to this island, but you know, I knew that I wanted to be a doctor, and so when I got down to MUA, uh, we all know the you know the kind of the stigma that comes with being an international graduate. But we, um, me and a couple of people there, we were just very determined, and we went to work, and we we worked really really hard. Uh, MUA has incredible instructors. Um, uh, that and people that really want to watch you grow and become a good physician. So uh, did my two years down there, um, took step one uh, quickly on that. MUA will give you the tools to do great on your boards um, is the best way that I could say it. Like, any med school that you go to, doesn't matter if it's here in the States or in Canada or abroad, you're going to have to work really hard to do well on your steps, okay? MUA gives you all the resources. MUA gives you the books. It gives you the, you know, it gives you the teachers. It gives you um, the experience that you need to do well, but you just have to work really hard for it, um, especially if you... Uh, want to go to an international school, you know, to get back into the, the States and to, or to Canada, you have to do very well on your board exams. And I was fortunate enough to, um, have had just these incredible professors that kind of poured into me there and my boards ended up going really well. Um, so that's, the, that's the first step, right? Then you, uh, come and do your clinicals here in the United States. And I ended up in a little town called Homa, um, it is about 45 minutes out of New Orleans. There's a, 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 a amazing teaching hospital there, uh, Chabert Hospital. I hope that we're still affiliated with them, to be honest with you. I'm not sure. But um, that was, oh, man, that was like a deep dive into just the clinical medicine. And that was the first year, truly formative year of me becoming a doctor. I mean, it is a small community hospital, but the knowledge that you can get there is invaluable. I mean, the autonomy that you have there as just kind of a, a, a student doctor, right? The, they, they want you to work and they, ex they ex expected a lot out of me, but um, it made me into the physician that I am today. Um, I spent a lot of my time uh, in Homa, Louisiana at Chabert, did a ton of my rotations there. And then I ended up uh, coming up to New York to finish off um, the rest of my cores and some electives. Um, I love New York City. I, I, I love this place. And when MUA, MUA was the first time I actually had ever come up here to do uh, ob gyn rotation. So came up here, fell in love with the city and knew from just kind of being here that I wanted to go and at least start off at Sinai. Um, once again, I mean, it was all those clerkships. It was the, the effort, the studying and doors opened up and I was able to come here. Um, and I have been here since then. MUA, um, has done incredible things for me, but it also did some really incredible things for some of my friends. I have, um, I have one of my great buddies from the island still talk to a couple, I talked to about five or six people on regularly that I went to school with down there. And one of them is an anesthesiologist right now at the Mayo Clinic in Tampa. Uh, another one is doing a trauma fellowship at, tr at shock. And he went as a prelim intern to, uh, Johns Hopkins and they ended up keeping him. And now he's at, uh, living his dream, literally his dream, um, at shock trauma, a great friend that went to MUSC for, uh, endocrine and she's a chief this year and kind of getting ready to wrap up her fellowship. These are all people that worked really hard and that MUA got them 
to to where they're at now and kind of living out their dream in medicine. Uh, a little bit. That's my story, I guess. And, um, you know, is, is there anything that you guys want to know from me and about what I do or about MUA? I would love to answer any questions. What would be, okay, so what would be the first question from, like, what would be the best way an undergrad to stand out Tammy way? Um, I think, you know, I think you have to show that you are dedicated and that you're willing to put in the work to, to become a great doctor, right? Um, international schools are hard, so, and, you know, Fortunately, sometimes the, the attrition rate can be kind of high, but you, if, if you can show that you are a hard worker, that you really care about medicine and that you want to be there, that's, I think that's the best way to stand out. That's what I get. All right, next, I believe I answered Sheed's question about which surgery program. So I was at Mount Sinai um, in the Upper East Side. What was the greatest transition you faced your first year? First year of uh, being a, let's just say, I'll kind of give you the first years of my medicine career. So first year of going to MUA, it was picking up a rhythm. It, it's learning how to study. It doesn't matter, I, don't, I, don't, I really, it doesn't matter kind of what you did in your past life. There is nothing like studying in med school. Um, you live and breathe studying and that's what you need to do to do well. So that first year, it was really transitioning into um, setting up good habits. And that's probably my highest like recommendation that I could say is from the, if you, if you go anywhere, but if you go to MUA from the moment you walk in those doors, try your best, work hard and um, yeah, it could happen to you. I mean, it could happen. And then what ends up happening is after that first year, you have um, worked so hard that almost a transition into your second year is easier. Because even though the classes are not getting easier, you're so you're such in a good rhythm that it feels in a kind of a way like it's easier, if that makes any sense. But it all starts with good habits. So that I guess that was my first year of med school. My first year of residency was just realizing that you knew nothing. So whatever you learn uh, in med school, your first day of residency is like, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> and um, So the greatest transition that year was just relearning the medicine that I was practicing, I guess, like, you know, really actually diving into surgery and diving into clinical medicine. I mean, as for as much as med school can teach you, um, you're just, you don't have enough time to learn things like dosages and stuff like that. So that was a little bit overwhelming at first, but you definitely get the hang of it. And a lot of hospitals are, and nurses are there to, um, to help you. Any, let's see, let's see. Yeah, how was that? Uh, all right, life on the island. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, most fun I have uh, ever had. Seriously, even for being in med school, the island was incredible. Nevis is a beautiful place with beautiful people. Um, you learn to live simply. Um, I don't know. It's been a while since I've been back, but I've been talking to my wife about going back at some point. Um, there was, um, there was like one big grocery store when I was there. I think there was maybe like two gas stations and not much else. There's no, I, I, I don't remember any movie theater. There was a couple of good restaurants, 
but you know you spend most of your time on campus or where you live and um or, or in the library studying and then what ends up happening is that every couple of weeks you get a break and those are after you take your block exams so every four weeks you take a set of exams and then you know you've kind of been working really hard for four weeks and then once you take those exams then we would um, kind of explore the island a big thing that we love to do was go on catamarans um, you go in with a bunch of people in kind of at the school at the same time and you each end up paying like you know 20 us dollars but it's just a great day of being out on the boat and uh kind of going around there's also some incredible food on nevis there's a four seasons if you happen to like the golf and you want to play every once in a while um there is some really fun stuff to do the weather the weather is beautiful and um i loved i loved it uh and i would go back in a heartbeat uh, can you tell us more about how you got matched with the surgery program? Uh, sure. So uh, basically, I had gone into MUA. Just, I, I just knew I wanted to do surgery. I knew that I wanted to work with my hands. And so from the very moment um, I walked in, I kind of started working on that goal. Um, I was uh, fortunate enough to be anatomy TA and uh, TA in some other classes. And then when that took me into my clinical years, I, you know, I set myself apart by do, working hard on every rotation because um, that really, you know, when it comes down to the end of it, all of these, even if you don't want to be a psychiatrist or even if you don't want to be in, uh, you know, a primary care doctor, um, every rotation matters and every rotation will teach you something. Um, so I worked really hard at those and especially my, obviously my general surgery, uh, internship at that time, it was, I believe 12 weeks and I just loved it. And I, you know, if you, if you go in there humbly, you work really hard and you do your best and you're going to get good recommendations, right? People got to see that you love surgery. So the big and most important thing to do is to do well do well on your steps and that's why you got to kind of focus on studying immediately kind of when you get there it's not to say you can't have fun like i said i had plenty of fun on the island but it's really about setting up a good rhythm so do really well on your steps do you know work really hard in all your clerkships but especially surgery get good recommendation letters and then start doing electives at places that um you would consider applying to um, you know, you still don't have that much time. Um, you know what I'm saying? But I did, you know, I just, I did every kind of surgery you could do. I, I did a urology. Um, I did a ton of orthopedics. I did general surgery. Um, and I just kind of basically built this resume where people saw that I just really wanted to be a surgeon. I did the ICU, um, cause that's a huge part of surgery especially like in trauma patients and stuff like that. And um, yeah, I think that's it. Just great recommendations, working hard on my clerk, uh, clerkships. And then you, when it comes time to applying into, um, you know, into your residency, you know, th they'll see all those things. And then, then you hopefully get a bunch of interviews and you can just tell them about how much you want to cut people and they're going to love that. tips for a rising sophomore from college or from like your second year of MUA. So I'm going to say maybe MUA on this. I hope that's right. Um, uh, leaving the island is going to be hard. You're going to probably, well, for me it was hard because I loved it down there. But the biggest thing is kind of go into your uh your initial clerkships just go in there excited go in there with a good mood like in a in a good mood if you if you can help it um and do the best you can to stay focused on medicine wherever you're at because right you've been away for so long you know it's been almost a year and a half or however long it is and now you're getting kind of back into the states the the biggest thing is just when you've finished you know your first step and you start your clerkships, just continue to work hard wherever you're at um, and enjoy it and just um, 
the experience will go by really, really fast. So tips would be continue to work hard, have a good attitude. I know it sounds cheesy and cliche, but it's so true. Um, that goes a really long way in medicine. You know, after f- now I'm in my, I'm a PGY six now. So it's been a while. Um, my best advice and the thing that's done carried me very well is just be a good person, be kind always, and just realize that you're there for the patient, all right? And always be nice to nurses because they can help you. Um, they can they can teach you a lot of stuff and they'll help you when you're in a jam. Did you do any research before matching into residency? I worked at a clinic. I didn't do any any like long long like I didn't do any uh I didn't have any papers or any publications when I applied to residency um that is something that I would recommend if there's any way I don't know um if they offer uh, many more research opportunities the thing is that it's it's at least hard your first two years right you're on the island you if you maybe know somebody back home um that you want to work with then maybe they'll let you do it from long distance but I would suggest at least those first two years that you really focus doing well on step one. Don't worry about the research. Your third and fourth year when you're back in the States, just any hospital that you go to, just ask if there's projects going around um, and jump on those. Um, Yeah, uh, yeah, but I, let me, so yeah, I didn't do a lot of research and I wish that's something that I would have done in hindsight because it is important and it will um that's how you get into fellowships is through a lot of research the opportunities will come but if i could go back hindsight 2020 my third and fourth year i would have done a little tried to find more research projects to do high school sophomore all right my bad (laughs) um all right cool man uh well keep at it uh and um yeah i mean you got a while to go uh work really hard in high school you know uh stay focused and just do really well on your sats or and your acts you know go to a good college and then from there you know just kind of keep focusing uh in college as well just it's it's gonna be a long road it's a long road but it's a hundred percent worth it Are there any research opportunities available during med school? I, I am not a huge research person. I had to become a research person. So I don't think I was purposely looking for those opportunities. Uh, even now, I'm, I'm assuming they exist. It would be kind, it's hard to do research once again on the island. It's just the, the, the school itself is not doing any projects, you know, um, even if you want to do anything, you don't really have the database and stuff to kind of do any kind of project really down there. But your third and fourth year, you could definitely, uh, wherever hospital you go to, there's always going to be residents working on something. And you just have to ask them. Literally, now now, the, now I get asked all the time, are you doing it? I'm like, yeah, sure. And as a med, as a med student, that's the best time to, to kind of jump into some research because that you're going to pretty be pretty much be working with residents and that's how you kind of start getting your name on things right you're not unless you write your own paper and you've done all the research yourself you know most likely you're not going to be a first author on the paper but you might end up you know somewhere towards the end but you're getting your feet wet and you're learning how to do research um and you could definitely get your name on some stuff when you're applying to residency all right let's see where am i from and what is the tip where am I from and what is different about living on Nevis? What should we be prepared for? Also, if I'm not mistaken, you do two years on the island and three to four, you go elsewhere. If so, is that process and where did you end up? All right. Um, so I am originally from uh, Miami, then moved to North Carolina, went to school in North Carolina. And then when I finished college, just trying to, you know, I took a year off um, and worked in Memphis, Tennessee, where my family lived. And uh, that's where I met the, the doctor who uh, went to MUA. Uh, what is different about living on Nevis? Everything. Um, it, is a, it is a small island. Um, 
but a beautiful island. Um, it's a very simple life. Like, I mean, my apartment eventually, and streaming services weren't that, like, they were around, but they weren't as big as they are now. So, um, you know, we kind of, like, we really didn't, you got, you should be studying all the time, but, you know, there's not really TV, you know? It's like, it's... I, I, once again, that was what it was like for me um, at that time. You know, we had to stream everything. You had to hook up your TV to your laptop. And if you wanted to watch any movies and stuff like that. Um, and my apartment had a TV, but it hardly ever turned on. The island is a great place to be outdoors on those days off. Once a week, you should go to the beach and just go have, you know, if you drink, you have a glass of wine or a beer or a water or wherever. And just enjoy it because it's a very simple life like you will look back and say man that was awesome um it's just it's a completely different world right one grocery store you know uh getting around the island and doing things on the island are just are just different than being in the states right like to pay your bills you actually or at least at that time you had to go into town to pay your bills and you know you'd have to like take a morning off from classes and um most people unless you rent a car um then you know there's a ton of taxis and stuff that'll get you from place to place uh a group of us uh had a car and uh that kind of made the experience a lot easier for us because we could just get wherever we wanted to but i think i don't even know the square miles it's it's a very small island If I'm not saying, so, and yes, uh, like I said, so my, uh, I did pretty much all my major clerkships at Chabert Hospital in uh, Houma, Louisiana, which is right outside, um, right outside of New Orleans. And th that transition was um, easy. I mean, did a great job. Uh, you know, they kind of set you up with obviously the, the coordinators at each of these facilities and the next thing you do is kind of like it prepares you for adulthood it really does i mean you have to find a place to live you know they kind of those those things aren't kind of handed to you but you know at that and at that point you will just be you'll be you'll be kind of ready for the transition so you know you just kind of find a place to live and you you show up on the first day you're supposed to supposed to be there um it's exciting and i think what the cool thing about going is that you have an opportunity to live in a in a couple different places or as many places as you kind of want to go right you know if you went to a certain school kind of here in the states if you went to miami you're always going to be in miami but if it wasn't from your i wouldn't have found new york city and i love it here and i've been here now six seven seven years and um i'm just grateful that it brought me up here What was my study technique that got me through? Um, it was, uh, I'm an early bird. Um, so I would wake up pretty early. I think it was like kind of around five. Um, and I would typically on, you'll have a lot of resources on the islands. They have a lot of databases and stuff like that. So I would typically just enjoy my coffee and um, uh, just kind of study for like an hour, kind of warm up. You go to class all day and then basically we would either uh there's a lot of opportunities at least there was to play soccer so a lot of us after class would you know kind of do some kind of physical activity to just be able to move for the day uh, just to be able to move after sitting down for an entire day and we would hit the library after that and then we would stay till 11 when it closed and just did that over and over again but we went i i personally went hard six days a week and then one day i didn't even touch medicine um and i i kind of i think i've i've maintained that this entire time and i think it's really benefited me i think you need that one day to kind of process everything everybody studies different um but that's the way i did it i studied six days always relaxed um then when it came time to start studying for step one you know you you are for the opportunity to go home or you could study on the island um, i chose to go home and i just from nine till maybe eight o'clock every day i studied for an entire two months it was it's intense like med school is a lot of studying but at the end of the day 
you need it if you want to be a good doctor, right? Like if you don't have the knowledge, it's going to show. Um, so you got to put in hours and that's basically what I did. But I also very much enjoy my free time. Uh, as you can see right above me, I have some surfboards, like leisure does exist. It's, and, um, you just got to get into that rhythm that I was talking about. Whatever works best for you. You know, if you decide that you want to work out in the mornings and go to class, the biggest thing is, is that you have to study every day. And then at the end of four weeks, once you take your blocks, you typically take them on like a Thursday or Friday, take that Saturday, Sunday off, and Monday get back on it. Uh, my specialty is interventional radiology. So I'm currently uh, in the ESIR program at SUNY Downstate, which basically is an accelerated program for interventional radiology, right? I'll be board certified in diagnostic radiology as well as interventional radiology. I uh basically my first my first year was an internship year i did an extra year of surgery and then my second third and now my fourth year were all pretty much a lot of diagnostic radiology and uh a, a, a little bit of interventional but this my last year is all interventional radiology now so now in my last year of residency basically i took away a year of my fellowship Fourth year when you come back to state, can you explain the process for third and fourth year when you come back to state? Is it like residency where you have to match? Do you pick where you want to go? Uh, if I remember it correctly, you can select where you want to go, but there, for example, not every person can go to Chabert, right? Um, and that's one of at least at that time, that was one of our better teaching hospitals. So everything everything kind of in medicine you'll see is also based on kind of your your performance, right? So if you work hard, your, your, your professors in your first and second year um, uh, love what you do and they have great recommendations for uh, about you, then you know you could you could pick where you want to go. And then there's a couple at that time that didn't exist. So I, I, I wish I could, I wish I knew the answer to this, but like when I applied, it was only Chabert, New York City. I think there was something in Chicago. And towards the end of my time, I think they had, they got Florida, but I never went there. So um, you, you will end up going to other places because not every clerkship is offered at the same hospital. But I think most people will end up doing a little bit of a stint in New York at some point. Let's see. And I found out by MUA from another doctor. He was an OB guy in Memphis, Tennessee, and he went to MUA and I saw him and I was like, man, like you made it, like you're a doctor, you know? And he was like, yeah. And he was like, look, you have to go down to this island and um, it's gonna be very different than here, but if you work hard, you can become a doctor too. Is there ever time or a chance for friends or family could come visit you during the year? Yeah, yeah, plenty of time for friends. You're gonna make some incredible friends on the island. Like you guys are gonna go, med school is kind of a battle and you gotta find good friends that are going to be willing to go through it because it's it's stressful it's hard and you sometimes you want to give up um but it is definitely worth it and you're going to make some great friends and if your friends want to come and visit you this isn't this isn't there's no more you're you're kind of in med school you're an adult there's no real handling nobody's going to tell you that you need to be studying like nobody's going to keep an eye on you like that right so it's like if you want to take a weekend off for your friends do it have fun, you know, like, and enjoy yourself and then get back, get back to work. You know, there was plenty of times where I had some family visit and you had to take, you know, took a couple of days off and that's fine. So family can come and visit, um, as far as I'm aware.
Ah, uh, MUA versus Raw, should I switch since MUA is cheaper? I, I, I do have some, I have some friends that I've met along the way that went to Ross. They're all doing very well um, as well. I mean, I, I listed off, you know, MUA definitely opened the doors for me. Um, and I'm here. I, 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 you know, it was... If you work hard, that's all I could say. Like I have the highest recommendations and I'm really grateful for MUA because I wouldn't have been a doctor if it wasn't for them. And now I get to do something that I love every day. So um, it's been, it was, it's been an incredible experience for me and I, I highly recommend it. Uh, what did you do in between semesters? Did you take a break or study year round? Uh, in between the semesters, I think you have like a week, a week or two weeks. I can't remember a couple of them. Uh, I never studied because you like you've gone through an entire semester. Like it's it's tough. You're going to be tired and you should use that time to rest. Um, I stay. I think I came home like once or twice and then I stayed on the island the rest of the time. I tell you, you're going to make some great friends down there. And all me and all my buddies would stay down there and just enjoy the island which was really fun to do. And St. Kitts is right across the way. And we used to go there for, you know, weekends and stuff like that, which was awesome. Do I feel like they prepared me well for step? Yes, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. So step, um, is it's a hard exam. And, but if you go to MUA and you decide that that's kind of where you, you know, you want to see, like get your education from, um, the thing is that you're not like the kids that are, for example, in in the States or in Canada or anywhere else that are taking the USMLE. There's no they don't have any more of a particular advantage than you do. Right. Because it, it's a standardized test. Like so you're going to do as well as like they're going to give you all the resources that you need and you're going to do as well on step as you were kind of capable of doing, right? Like if, if you work incredibly hard and you study, then MUA gave you the resource to get there. Um, if, you know, you don't do much, you don't pay attention in class and stuff like that, then obviously then you're not going to be prepared. So uh, for me, I, they did an incredible job and just uh, it also all falls kind of on you. You just got to stay on top of reading. You got to stay on top of studying and um the opportunities uh you'll see you'll see like your effort will be rewarded uh one more question anybody all right guys well thank you uh so much for this opportunity um I wish you all the best. Uh, MUA was a great choice for me. Um, and fall will be online. Do you feel the benefits will be the same? I actually didn't know that. I, um, I'll answer this one last question. So fall will be online. Do you feel the benefits will be the same? Yeah, I mean, I guess you're going to be in the comfort of your home. You know, if fall is going to be, wait, fall online, but you stay here or you go to the island? Like, Basically here, fall is going to be online, but you're going to be here in the States and the benefits going to be the same, right? Like you're still going to get the exact same teaching. Um, you are just going to be in your own environment. So that's, you know, it's up to you to kind of set up, set yourself up to do the best that you can here, whatever that means, right? If that means that, I don't know, you go away to somewhere else where you know that you could really focus. You know, if you have a hard time studying at home, then it's probably not the best place to be. Yeah. So if you're going to stay in the U.S. until December, well, that's awesome. You get to stay with family. It's kind of a crazy time to travel right now, obviously. Um, so I think you you won't lose anything from it. You just have to stay focused at home. All right, guys. Uh, well, once again, thank you for your time, guys. I, I wish you all the best. Um, if you're ever in New York City, uh and you're at SUNY Downstate, uh, stop by Interventional Radiology and we could chat some more, okay? 
once again, thank you, MMA. Thank you for this opportunity and I uh, wish you guys all the best.